All right, so we're here today. Uh, I have the lucky pleasure and honor of being here with Atlanta Falcons GM and former Griffin alumni, Thomas Dimitrov. Thomas, thanks for being here today. Appreciate you having me. Awesome. So it's, uh, it's been about a year since you've been here. Uh, a lot has changed, as you can see. Coming in here, what are your initial impressions uh, stepping into the building? I'm just amazed. I mean, um, uh, kudos to, to Stu Lang for all that he's done for this university. I think it's amazing. And where the university is right now and the allure of coming in here, it's about recruiting, right? Let's make no mistake about it. I don't care wherever it is across North America. You have to have the digs, so to speak, to, to entice. And uh, there's no question that this place will entice. You're born in Ohio. Uh, and your father used to coach here. Besides the allure of coming and playing for your father at some point, um, what was your draw to Guelph? What were your initial impressions of Guelph when you first came here? Well, we came here when I was quite young and I would always hang around the field and he'd be coaching and I would be here way later than I should be or way earlier than I should be because I should have been doing homework. And I'd be hiding around. Some of these guys that are even here today that were a little older than me, I'd be hiding behind piles uh, on the field making sure that he didn't see me and I'd see him make a beat for me when he saw me on the field thinking, you should be doing homework, and he'd be storming across the field because he was a tough, strong, hard-nosed guy. And I remember that was the start of my, my experiences around Guelph and loving the guys here, the guys who were older. I, I idolized them, of course, and I watched how they played football with a lot of passion, a lot of heart. That's what I believe in, right? Fiery, passionate football. And the more I was around it, the more I realized Guelph was, there was something really cool and blue collar about the university and the people that were around here meaning more just focused on doing the best that they can. They weren't looking to be the, the glitzy, glam, you know, flashy group uh, back then. It was all about making sure that everyone played as hard as they could. And, and I, I sort of jumped on board with that. And I had looked at a lot of different places, of course, outside of this area. Um, and I was just drawn back here because obviously it's a great institution, great academics as well as, uh, again, I had a lot of really good friends here who had a very, very, very strong passion towards football and, and sport in general. Now, speaking to this pavilion specifically, um, you were no stranger to going into a brand new building. Uh, in Atlanta, you guys just put up a $1.6 billion facility. Now, when you build those sort of facilities, I mean, the, tar the, the goal is to enrich the experience for fans and bring in more fans to uh, the game. Uh, but there's also a, a factor for your players in building some sort of culture. So how important is it to build a, a facility like we have here today to, uh, to set a standard for football in the program? That's a great point. I mean, Culture is huge, right? That's, that's what drives it all. And we think about it down in Atlanta. It might even be more than 1.6 billion. Like I can't even imagine it, of course. But I mean, again, back to enticing, a, a back to people feeling like this is a part of their home. That is a very, very big thing. People become more and more proud of it. And when they go out on the field, they want to show the fan base, their, their teammates, et cetera, et cetera, how important it is to win for the University of Guelph. So we feel that down in Atlanta and we continue to build. We want to make sure that we have one of the loudest stadiums and we're working on that. That's not the easiest thing to do. In today's world, with all of what we're presenting, you know, there are places within our stadium in Atlanta that have people eating, watching big screens instead of being in their seats. So there is a transition there, right? A little bit of an evolution on how you're going to get people back into the seats. You want to make the facility the most attractive so that people want to be here, but you also want them in the seats. So there's an interesting sort of juxtaposition that, that needs to be worked on, and it will be. We're, we're getting really comfortable with where we are in Atlanta, and I'm sure you guys here in, at, at the University of Guelph are going to have a, a really uh, sort of strong time bringing everyone together, knowing that they want to be here and experience everything, but ultimately be out on the, in the stands cheering as loud as they can. Today's a very special day. Uh, obviously, uh, we're here to recognize the work by your father and the team has decided to name uh, the head coach's room after your father. Uh, speak about what your dad meant to you, um, uh, what he meant to, uh, what, what his strengths were as a football coach and this day in general to see all your old teammates and have your family here today. Well, I mean, I, I, my dad all my life, I was around football since the day I was born, literally. And I remember watching video, uh, well, then it was film, of course, when I was Beta young. Tapes. Uh, everything, <laughs> every, I mean, you know that from, from, your, from your world. I mean, the, the, again, back to evolutions, the evolution of where we were, how we evaluated video, um, film back then, how we, looked at, how we looked at plays. And I remember being around that all my life growing up. My, my, you know, single digit years all the way through my teenage years and always hanging around being, you know, very impressed by my dad's knowledge of the game because he was a very, very smart football man. He was also an incredibly driven, sort of focused, um, again, back to passionate, fiery. He was all about the team. 
interestingly enough, I, I grew up from the day I was born believing the team was bigger than, you know, the, the, the we versus the me was always a massively important thing from as, as, as long as I can remember. Interestingly enough, it really wasn't until I got to New England and worked for the Patriots and, and, and when I was around Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, did I get to see that materialize into championship football. So I was born and bred with it about team. I saw it operate, you know, in, in uh, New England for sure. We were that close uh, in Atlanta. So all of that was something that was instilled in me by, by my father and I'll never forget it. And the team was a big thing. Friendship and team slash was a very, very important thing for him. He preached that to me since I was a little boy and all the way through and I believe it now. It is so important. There is nothing like, I've always said this, is like, like hoisting a trophy with your friends around you, the people that you've, you know, bled with and sweat with and, and teared up with, nothing like that. You can do it and you can be lauded with all these accolades about being this or that, but there's nothing like doing it together as a team and, and that's something that I, 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 I definitely bleed uh, team and, and, and camaraderie and, and now, interestingly enough, in Atlanta, we are all about brotherhood, so it speaks to me. Specifically to be here today with your former teammates and your family, uh, how does that feel today? Uh, it feels great. I, I'm, I'm beyond... Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm beyond enthralled with the place and, and the energy that's here and, and uh, having an opportunity to be around some of these guys, again, some older, some my age, but mostly older, older players that played for my dad. And, and when I start talking to them about how they affected their lives and, and, and their lives, not only in football, of course, but outside, again, it warms my heart. It brings a tear to my eye. I was thinking about it when I was driving up. I ended up flying into Buffalo and driving up, so I had about an hour and a half to drive and I, I had some some pretty emotional times thinking about it. So I'm so excited about being here and, and my, our family is thrilled that, that, the, that the University of Guelph is doing this. So in passing, uh, if you're in Atlanta and by chance you run into somebody from Guelph and they tell you from Guelph, what are, what are the first things that kind of hit you? Like what are your lasting memories of Guelph? It just comes back to just the camaraderie here. There was something very special about the University of Guelph and the football team and again in sport in general. And I, I felt like there are some great schools around, uh, around Ontario, of course, and across the country. But I, I, every time I talk to people about the University of Guelph and, and how it's evolved over the years and how, the, how sport is thriving here, how academics are thriving, how I think the, the actual enrollment is well over 20,000 now, it's just, again, it just makes me feel uh, very proud to be a part of that, that part of the growth of this university. That's awesome. Uh, well, we really appreciate your time here today, and we wish you the best of luck uh, with the Falcons in the upcoming season. My pleasure.